we go. We are in Colorado. We've got a couple days to kill, so I figured I better stop picking up the tag. We're going to go kill some prairie dogs with my bow. We'll see how that works out. By the tags. Well, everybody, welcome to this week's Racks and Tracks. This week, we're heading out to Colorado. We're going to do an elk hunt. we got a 10-day pack trip planned, and we're pretty excited about it. It's myself, Denise, and one of my pro guys, Jim. Anyhow, we got a couple days to kill, so we're out. Tanner? Yep. Tanner, we really appreciate. He's going to take us out. We're going to see if we can shoot some prairie dogs. He's got a bunch of prairie dogs out here. The grass is a little tall. Matter of fact, I see a couple of them standing up out there right now, so it should be a lot of fun. Don't go anywhere. We're probably going to fling some arrows that I hope like heck that I smoke me a prairie dog. Yeah. Let's go do it, buddy. dog hunting. Not as easy as I thought. A lot of dogs out here but they're detecting us. They see us or hear us or something. I don't know. Well Tanner, we can't say we didn't try. I had about four or five shots with a bow. But I would like to shoot one of these dogs before I go home. So what do you think? Take the 223 out and go see if we can bark a couple of them? I think that's the way to get her done. Most efficiently <laughs> anyway. Well, let's go out there. and We couldn't do it with a bow, but we tried. We got a couple 60-yard shots, but we're going to go out there with a rifle, and I'm going to bark a couple of them before we get out of here. So let's go try it. Okay. Okay. Gordon? Yep. <laughs> That's so funny. Good way to pass a day right here. Well, let's take a couple more. Let's take a couple longer shots. I wish that one was standing up out there. Think shooting scared him? <laughs> You know, it, it can make a few of them duck and dive, but um, we're looking them way out there. Yeah, I think if we wait a little bit, there'll be a couple more that that stick their heads up and out. This thing, uh, this thing puts the herd on, doesn't it? Yeah, these are all hand reloads too. Yeah. Two twenty-three does a job. That's my first dog. First shot, first kill. Let's get a few more. Well, here we are. We made it out in Colorado. We are heading out to Budge's Resort. We have a rugged ride here ahead of us. 
We've been on this road now for what, 30, 30 miles? 31 miles and eight more miles of this. Yeah, we got eight miles of this miserable stuff. So we end up taking Denise's car and parking it. And we jumped in Jim's vehicle here. And now we're gonna take the next seven, eight miles in his vehicle. But this is a beautiful country. We're out here for about nine days. Um, what do you think, guys? You excited? I'm pumped. Me too. <laughs> Let's just get through this rough stuff, though. <laughs> well, here we are. We're up at the lodge. It was quite a trip to get back in here. I guess what we're going to do, our plan is we're going to spend the night here in this cabin tonight, and then tomorrow we're going to pack all of our gear. We're going to head into base camp. They said they're seeing a lot of elk right now. They killed a couple of nice bulls already last week. The muzzleloader guys are in here right now. Us bow hunters are in here this week. We can't wait to get back in here. We're gonna check this cabin out. Let's check it out. Some music tonight, man. I would maybe put an arrow in that one there. I might shoot this from here. I'd probably pass on that one. I don't know I'm, I'm joking. <laughs> well, we cut some up earlier. I want to cut it down there. This is uh, a Okay. Uh, uh, stay here tonight, and tomorrow morning they're going to pack us out. So. Come on in, let's check out our home. Oh, it is. It don't get too any much better more than this. Rustic than this, <laughs> isn't it? These things were built back in the 1920s, they said. This is pretty neat, man. That is a long ways down right there, my fellas. Yeah. Yeah. Group. See ya. Bye bye. See you Sunday. All right, well, here we are. This is our first night out. What our plan is, is we're going to get back here on top of these great big hills back up in here. We're going to check out these valleys. We're going to watch these big meadows and stuff up here tonight. Try to figure out where these elk are coming out at. And hopefully tomorrow morning we'll have a plan. We'll know where we got to be. We may have to take off two, three o'clock in the morning or whatever it's going to take to get there. This is our first day, so we're not quite sure. But we got a long walk ahead of us to get to these top of these ridges to watch tonight. Uh, tomorrow morning we'll get up early, try to cut these things off as they're going back to bed. So that's our plan tonight. We're going to watch them coming down the valleys. Let's do it, buddy. What do you Let's think? Let's do it. Man, we come a long ways. That we did. And they say there's a lot of elk out here, so and we are back a long ways. I mean, there's nobody hunting this area. This is a virgin valley. He says nobody's been this in season, here yeah. all year, so we're pumped. Let's go. Let's do it. Figured we'd come up the top of this mountain. There's another camp that was about four miles away from ours. So Denise and I decided to chuck it up in here. Jim was supposed to be with us, but I'm not sure what happened. He broke off from us. We had a beautiful opportunity here about an hour ago. Real nice bowl. We were sitting here taking a break, taking a couple of pictures, and 
and he spotted a big bull coming right straight at us. I had that thing within 40 yards, ready to pull the trigger on it. It spooked, looked at Jim and busted out. All of a sudden here comes Jim over the hill and I'm like, oh, I guess that's why they call it hunting, I guess. Uh, we come about four miles and straight uphill the whole ways. I mean, we're at about 11,000 feet right now, maybe 10-5. As you can see, we got top of the hill and there's a pretty good buck sign up here already, but this camp shouldn't be too much further. It's at four miles. It feels like we've gone about 10, so don't go anywhere. Stay with us. We hope to kill a nice elk, man. We found it. We found it. Glad we made it. Kind of a long hike. It's a very long hike. There it is right there. That's our camp. That was a long walk. Longest four miles I've ever hiked. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's go see what our home looks like. Yeah, sounds good. Check this out. This is what we've been looking for. It's called a wallow. Bulls like to come in here and they roll around in this stuff here. And they piss all over themselves. Check it out. One thing smells too, you can smell it. Look at this, they've been in here. Our camp is right there. <laughs> wow. Well, we made it up here to our second camp. When we get back from this quick commercial break, Jim's gonna get his first shot at a bull. Here at Racks and Tracks TV, we love our shadow hunter blinds. They are quiet, have tons of space inside, and keep you protected from the elements. And the best part is, Wildlife have no problem getting right up next to them. Check them out at shadowhunterblinds.com. It's here, the most innovative field dressing kit ever, developed by Raptor Razor. Its huge ergonomically designed hook on the Mako cuts quick with precision. The big game Skinner cuts through the toughest of places, saves you time in the field. Each kit comes with multiple blades, completely interchangeable. It's like no other knife made. For the full line of accessories, go to our website, www.raptorrazor.com. That's www.raptorrazor.com. We spotted a couple small spikes. Jim decided he wanted to try to take a shot. A few minutes went by. They moved down about 60 yards in some grass in front of us. They said shoot. Okay, okay, okay. I know. They said shoot. No. Did I thought I said let me glad. Didn't I say range him? We spend the rest of the afternoon in glass in the mountain for the next morning. He's turning, he's turning the yard, those toes. Well, here it is, Saturday, September 20th. We snuck back in here early this morning. The night before, we seen a pile of elk back up in here on this ridge. For some reason, they're not here. I don't know if we got another camp over here that spooked these guys out. But there was a lot of, we seen some big bulls. It's about uh, it's 8 o'clock right now in the morning. Not one elk this morning, hardly any bugles. We heard a little bugle off here. Um, I don't know what we're gonna do. I think we're gonna sit here for a while. <clears throat> then we're gonna head up top of this mountain and see if we can uh, locate where they went. 
but it got quiet. Last night we heard nothing here. The night before this mountain was full of elk. So we don't know where they went, what happened, so long walk up here I know that. <clears throat> Let's wait and see what happens. We've been putting on we've been putting on a lot of miles. Uh, come across this super wild. We found quite a few of them. This is probably one of the nicest ones we've seen so far. You see across the spot there looks like another one over there. We're just heading over there and Denise hollering, hey look at this one. Looks like it's been used, I mean quite a bit. Not recently because the water's still clean. <clears throat> This would be something on my good hot days like this to sit on. You know, sit on these bottles up to in here and muddy all up and get yourself all stinking. And so anyhow, second day we have not got an elk yet. Um, we've had a couple close calls, I guess you could say. Um, we're hunting hard, man. We're here for another six, seven more days, so we've got plenty of time left. So the bulls and the, the elk are just starting to turn on. We've seen a good herd yesterday up here on top of this ridge, but we got up here this morning and there was nothing there, like dead last night, it was dead there, the night before we seen them. Last night, yeah, lots of them up there. So, well, we're hunting hard. We're gonna head back to camp right now, we'll get some showers, I'll clean up, and uh, get ready for tonight, so make a game plan. Let's do it. Do it. Bath. <laughs> Take a bath. There you go. <laughs> Well, the second day ended about like the first. A lot of walking, a lot of bugling. When we get back from this commercial break, I'm up at bat next, and I get my shot at my first bull. Nobody just gives you the title of most accurate bow on the planet. It needs to be earned. Earned by creating a parallel cam technology Earned by uniting strength and balance. Prime defines accuracy. Prime, where accuracy is everything. I end up losing my diaphragm for my bugle. Jim went back to see if he could locate it. That's all I had left was my cow talk and I knew that's all I needed.
kept checking the wind, it was going right straight in. Thank you for ASCO, Tinks, and Setlot for being there when I needed you. I knew I had no choice. I needed to close the gap. I was so close now, I could actually smell them. Well, I'm closing the gap on a beautiful Colorado bow. Unfortunately, that's all the time we have for today's show, but you're not going to want to miss next week. I get my opportunity to draw back on a great bow. I hope you enjoyed today's show as much as we enjoyed bringing it to you. Until next week, I'm Ray Colvin, and we'll see you right here on Racks and Tracks. We come all the way up the top. We got right on these bowls. We snuck up right on these bowls. Well, hi, everybody. Today I'd like to talk about rattling antlers. A lot of people think it does not work. Well, I'll tell you what, it has a lot to do with the area, buck doe ratio. Um, like I say, it doesn't work as well in Michigan as it does in, in Iowa. But anyhow, I'm here to tell you that I've rattled for probably 35, 40 years. I've rattled in a lot of deer in, in that time. And I find my success I have is I use a big set of antlers. Now, for years I've used a smaller set of antlers, which has a nice sound, but I've noticed I haven't called as many bucks in as I have with this big set. Um, a lot of people think that these big antlers will also scare small bucks away. Well, I'm here to tell you it does not. I've rattled in as many little bucks, little guys, come into these big antlers as I have big guys. These things will call in anything. The key is this. The key is when you start your rattling sequence, you want to crack these things together as loud as you can possibly crack them. I mean, you want to hit them. And then start your sequence. The rattling sequence. And what that does is that gets their attention at a long distance. They may be 75, they may be 100, they may be 200 yards away from you. They hear that crack, their head's up, they hear that rattling, they're on their way. Now, the key is this. I would say that I probably spot 20% of the bucks that I rattled in. I've got a little bit of an advantage over most people because I've got two people in the tree stand. I've got a camera lady with me and she's constantly looking while I'm rattling and I'm looking. But many times, I would say 80% of the bucks I rattled in this year, I would not have spotted if it wasn't for her. So what I'm trying to say is when you're rattling these bucks in, when you're rattling these antlers, keep your eyes open all the time. A lot of times downwind, these bucks will be standing there 75, 80 yards. Many times I've had these antlers in my hand, that buck standing there 80 yards looking at me. The gig's up, he's gone. But don't stop rattling. Keep your sequence up. Keep your rattling going. Because there may be another buck coming from this direction. There might be one coming from this direction. About four years ago in Iowa, on one sitting, one rattle sequence, I rattled in five different mature bucks at the same time. They came in from everywhere. It was amazing. So don't think it doesn't work. When you rattle these antlers together, because it does, you just got to pay attention. That's the tech tip of the week. Racks and Tracks is proud to be sponsored by these fine products.